Kia ora New Zealand, in your headlines today, drug-free Sport New Zealand boss Graham Steele is scratching his head over the Nadzia Ostapchuk's positive drug test. The Belarusian has been stripped of her Olympic title after testing positive for an anabolic steroid, with, which means Valerie Adams has been promoted to the gold medal. Steele says he finds it hard to believe that any athlete would be silly enough to take an old-fashioned steroid. Doubly surprising, one, that they would use it at all uh, unless they were almost certain that the testers weren't going to turn up. But to, to have any evidence uh, at the time of an event uh, is frankly stupid uh, or, or there's something else that's gone wrong. The sports minister is delighted at Valerie Adams' gold medal and has been texting the 27-year-old to let her know. Plans for a medal ceremony are being developed, but Murray McCulley says it'll take some time. He won't comment on whether he had suspicions about the doping by Nadzia Obstupchuk, but says he's pleased the drug testing regime works. And someone who says he's always had suspicions over the Belarusian is sports writer Phil Gifford. She throws 19.58 metres in Rome. She goes back and waits about a month, which would be roughly about how long it would take for heavy steroid use to start to give you benefit, and improves by two metres. Phil Gifford is writing Valerie Adams' autobiography, and he says one of the reasons he was convinced of Stupchuk was a drug cheat is that she's 31, and at that age, improvements as an athlete come in tiny gains. He says he had a sickening feeling that she, she would be taking sophisticated drugs and she would never get caught. I'm staggered that her and her minders were dumb enough to use what she herself describes, believe it or not, and I quote this morning, such an outdated drug as a steroid. She's obviously aware of more sophisticated drugs she should have taken. And there will be a golden glow for the city of sales tonight. Sky City's announced the top of the Sky Tower will be turning gold tonight in Valerie Adams' honour. Overseas now, where three New Zealanders were caught up in a hostage drama in West Papua, where up to ten hikers were held hostage for a day. Foreign Minister Murray McCulley has confirmed the incident happened on Sunday with the hostages released yesterday. And all the tourists are safe. And Mr McCulley says the details are still vague. And the insurance cover for flood-prone areas in Christchurch may be in the spotlight as a result of this week's downpour. Two days of constant rain has meant many quake-damaged streets are flooded and in some cases water has entered homes. Sarah Chief Executive Roger Sutton says he expects the ongoing rain event will put a big question mark over insurance cover for flooding. There are some streets that will be more prone to flooding as a result of this. Um, and then there's the issue about how much worse is that flooding? And does it ha- is it, a, is it a, a big, big inconvenience, you know, having a street full of water, or is it actually meaning your house is going to be harder to insure going forward? And the Pope's butler, Paolo Gabrielli, and accomplice Claudio Schiapoletti have been under house arrest since May at the Vatican and have been charged with aggravated theft. Gabrielli will stand trial after allegedly stealing and leaking letters and documents he stole from the Pope's office. He's told investigators his motivation was to clean up what he describes as evil and corruption inside the Vatican. And Māori Party co-leader Tariana Turia says the views of the community, not hers, are important around the release of sex offender Stuart Wilson. He's to be released into monitored accommodation in the same street as the senior politician. Mrs Turia says she hasn't raised any objections about Wilson's placement, but the community she lives in has. It would have been good for the community to have been consulted properly about him coming into our ohi. People need to have comfort that their rights and their safety will be protected. And persistent heavy rain has put the Otago Regional Council on alert for potential floods. Met Service is predicting 50 to 70 millimetres of rain for Dunedin and North Otago by tomorrow morning. ORC Duty Flood Manager Mike Goldsmith says the council is keeping an eye on the rivers in North Otago, which are higher than normal. Mr Goldsmith is advising those living in low-lying areas to keep a close watch on river flows and surface flooding. And lastly, for the chocolate lovers out there, another good reason to eat or drink cocoa. New research shows it may benefit the brain in old age, helping to improve memory and cognitive function. Kanui Nā.